Hello everyone, I'm Himanshu Vasnani from Department of Mechanical Engineering. I am here to discuss with you on the subject non-destructive evaluation and testing. The sweat code is ME419, unit number 4 in the series and lecture number 27. Ah, today's topic are magnetic particles, dry mag particle inspection, wet suspension inspection and quality and process control. So, learning objective for today are to provide the students with a basic understanding of magnetic particles and quality and process control and to know about the concept of dry particle inspection, wet suspension inspection. Okay. And the learning outcome of today's lecture will be students will have an understanding of magnetic particles and quality and process control and students will understand the concept of dry particle inspection and wet suspension inspection. So let's start with the magnetic particle. So the particles that are used for magnetic particle inspection are key ingredients of as they form the indications that alert the inspector to the presence of defects. Okay, because they, they form a cluster around the defect so that you can easily identify that okay they are the defect is there or crack is there. So the particles that they play a very important role in magnetic particle inspection okay and that because they alert the inspector to the presence of defects okay so the particles start out as tiny mild pieces of iron or iron oxides okay a pigment somewhat uh, like paint is bonded to their surfaces to give the particles color okay you can do this also so the metal used for the particles has high uh, magnetic permeability and low retentivity this high magnetic permeability is important because it makes the particles attract easily to small magnetic leakage fields from discontinuities such as flaws okay you know that this permeability high permeability has its own role in magnetic particles because this high magnetic permeability it is making the particles attract easily to small magnetic leakage fields from discontinuity such as flaws and on the other hand there is low retentivity okay this low retentivity is important because this property is giving the particles themselves never become strongly magnetized so they do not stick to each other or the surface of the part okay so particles are available mix for a wet solution okay so this both properties of the particles having high magnetic permeability has its own role because it makes the particles attract easily to small magnetic leakage fields from discontinuity such as flaws and this low retentivity property is also very important because it is making the, the particles having low retentivity they never become strongly magnetized because and they do not stick to each other or the surface of the part okay so dry magnetic particles see dry magnetic particles can typically be purchased either in red black gray yellow or several other colors so that a high level of contrast between the particles and the part be inspected can be achieved okay because because you have to identify the the particles in a different way and part to be inspected in a different way so you can put you can have the dry particles either in various colors so that you can maintain a level of contrast between the particles and the part to be inspected okay and the size of the magnetic particles is also very important okay uh, so dry magnetic particles products are products to, are produced to include a range of particle sizes okay like the fine particles few micrometer while the coarse particles have a diameter of about 150 micrometer the fine particles are more than 20 times lighter than the coarse particles so the fine particles also uh, differ based upon their applications okay like the fine particles have different diameters and the coarse particles have different diameters as you can see that fine particles have 50 micrometers and while coarse particles have diameter of 150 micrometers so it varies ah 
So this this difference in their diameter this makes the fine particles more sensitive to leakage fields from very small discontinuities. However, thus dry testing particles uh, cannot be made exclusively of the fine particles, where coarser particles are needed to bridge large discontinuities and to reduce the powder's dusty nature. Okay. See, fine particles are helpful because they are more sensitive to the leakage fields. Okay, from a small discontinuity. But uh, you can say you cannot uh, make dry particles exclusively of the the. You cannot make the dry testing, uh, dry testing of particles uh, exclusively of fine particles only because coarse particles are also have their own importance. Like coarse particles are needed to bridge larger discontinuities and to reduce powders just in nature. So both are important. Fine particles are also important and coarse particles are also important. And additionally, the small particles easily adhere to surface contamination such as remnants or dirt or moisture and get trapped in surface roughness features. Okay. So uh, it also it should also be recognized that the finer particles will be more easily blown away by the wind. Okay, that is that is with the uh, uh, issues with the particles that if the particle is finer, then it will be easily blown by the wind, and therefore windy conditions can reduce the sensitivity of an inspection obviously, because the particles may be blown away from the you can say from the inspection area, so uh, they can reduce the sensitivity of the of an inspection. And also, reclaiming the dry particles is not recommended because the small particles are less likely to be recaptured. Because the small particles are less likely to be recaptured because the once used mix will result in less sensitive inspection. Okay, so the, the we have to be very careful while using these finer particles. Okay, now the particle shape. Is also important. Long, slender particles tend to align themselves along the lines of the magnetic force. Okay, so you can also understand that that if you have a long, slender particles, they'll automatically align themselves okay to the lines of the magnetic force. And if the dry powder consists of only elongated particles, the application process would be less than desirable. Since long particles lack the ability to flow freely, okay, so we should be careful while selecting the particles of or the dry powder. So therefore, a mix of rounded and elongated particles is used, since it results in a dry powder. That flows careful that we we get a mixture of rounded and elongated particles okay because uh, it results in a dry powder that flows well and maintains good sensitivity so most dry particle mixes have uh, particles with uh, the ratios uh, between 1 and 2 so uh, let go further so magnet wet magnetic particles now we go with the wet magnetic particles see Magnetic particles, these are also supplied in wet suspension such as water or oil. Okay. The wet magnetic particle testing method is generally more sensitive than dry because the suspension provides the particles with more mobility and makes it possible for smaller particles to be used. Okay. Then you can see the particles are typically 10 micrometer and smaller since dust and Adherence to surface contamination is reduced or eliminated. So, see, wet particles have their own properties. Okay, they say that the magnetic particles, you say, we can also, uh, are, these are supplied in wet suspensions, and the suspensions like water or oil can be used in this. Okay, so they can say that the wet particle testing, wet particle magnetic testing, okay is generally more sensitive than the dry because the suspension that either the water or oil this provides the particles with more mobility they have the more mobility in the suspension wet suspension and makes it possible for smaller particles to be used okay 
and you can understand that small particles, uh, finer particles, they have more sensitivity. So since dust and adherence to surface contamination is reduced, obviously in wet suspension this is reduced and or eliminated. And the wet method also makes it easy to apply the particles uniformly to a relatively large. Okay, the wet particles, wet magnetic particles, uh, in this, if you go with the wet method, automatically it is because uniformly. Okay, it is very easy to apply particles uniformly to a large area. Okay. So wet method magnetic particles products differ from dry powder products in a number of ways. Okay. Now let's start with this. That one way is that both visible and fluorescent particles are available. And most non fluorescent particles are ferromagnetic iron oxides, which are either black or brown in color. So, uh, one of the most common particles like ferromagnetic iron oxides, okay, they are available uh, and they are in the color either black or brown in color. So, you can say then fluorescent particles are coated with pigments that fluorescence when exposed to ultraviolet light. Let's see. Uh, fluorescent particles they have an extra uh, you can say plus point that they fluorescence when you are exposing them to ultraviolet light which highlights the area in which they are found okay so particles that fluorescence green yellow the, are most common to take advantage of the peak color sensitivity of the eye but other fluorescent colors are also available so the diagram also you can see how this wet suspension this can be used for it is giving you a visibility okay so we can say that both visible and fluorescent particles are available and fluorescent particles obviously has a plus point of fluorescing when exposed to ultraviolet lights okay and uh, the carrier solutions can be water or oil based for wet matter uh, the water based carriers form Quicker indications, okay. These form quicker indications are generally less expensive, present little or no fire hazards, give off no petrochemical fumes, and are easier to clean from the part. Now, see, whatever method we are using, each method has its own properties, has its own advantages. So, if we go with the water based carriers, okay. Now, water based carrier solutions, these, these form quicker indications they have the this is the plus point with them that these water based carriers they form quicker indications they are generally less expensive which is very good they are pre present little or no fire hazard another plus point then give off no petrochemical fuels and are easier to clean from the part so the advantages are good when you go with the water based carriers now water based solutions are usually formulated with a corrosion inhibitor to offer some corrosion protection. This is for safety. That it is formulated with a corrosion inhibitor uh, which offers some corrosion protection. Uh, however, now we are going with the oil based one. Oil based carrier solutions offer superior corrosion and hydrogen embrittlement protection to those materials that are prone to attack by these mechanisms. Okay. Also both visible and fluorescent wet suspended particles are available in aerosol spray cans for increased portability and ease of application okay now we have availability of like visible and fluorescent wet suspended particles in aerosol spray cans okay and this has led to increased portability and ease of application okay now dry particle inspection Okay, the dry particle inspection. They say that in this uh, magnetic particle testing technique, when you go with the dry particle inspection, the dry particles are dusted into the surface of the test object as the item is magnetized. They say in this technique, the dry particles, these are dusted onto the surface of the test object as the item is magnetized. 
so the dry particle inspection is, is well suited for the inspection conducted on a rough surface see there are surfaces some are smooth some are rough okay so we have to find a solution for which you can do easy inspection so here they say that dry particle inspection this is well suited for the inspection conducted on rough surfaces okay for rough surfaces they are good now when an electromagnetic yoke is used the ac current the alternating current creates a pulsating magnetic field that provides mobility to the powder okay so dry particle inspection is also used to detect shallow subsurface cracks okay and dry particles with half wave diet current is the best approach when inspecting for lack of root penetration in wells of thin materials now they will be giving you more and more applications of dry particle inspection they say that it is uh, well suited for inspection on rough surfaces okay they say that it is good dry particle inspection is good to detect shallow surface cracks which is very good thing then dry particles with half wave diet current okay they say it is the best approach when inspecting for lack of root penetration in welds of thin materials so if any defect of root penetration lack of root penetration is well made also there then you can go with the dry particle inspection but it should be of thin materials okay so you have the applications with you now steps for performing dry particles inspection okay now surface preparation when they say they say that the surface should be relatively clean but this is not as difficult as it is with liquid penetrant testing okay because okay we should be careful with the liquid penetrant testing so the surface must be free of grease oil or other moisture that could keep from moving freely okay so we should free the surface from grease or oil or other moisture okay so a thin layer of paint rust or scale will reduce test sensitivity but can sometimes be left in place with adequate results okay so they say that while testing they give that they, they have some steps of performing this dry particle inspection and based upon the past experiences they say that the surface must be free from oil or grease or other moisture okay that will keep the particle free from moving freely and they say that a thin layer of paint a thin layer of paint may be rust test sensitivity but can sometimes be left in place with adequate results the specifications open all over up to 0.076 mm of a non conductive coating such as paint or 0.025 mm of a ferromagnetic coating such as nickel to be left on the surface okay so based upon the experiences passed they are telling us that a uh, coating or non conductive coating of uh, such as paint of uh, 0.076 mm it can be allowed up or a ferromagnetic coating such of such as nickel of uh, around uh, a specification of there uh, 0.025 mm it can be left on the surface and any loose dirt paint rust or scale must be removed okay any kind of loose dirt paint rust or scale must be removed in this now some specifications require the surface to be coated with a thin layer of white paint in order to improve the contrast difference between the background and the particles especially when gray color particles are used okay so to create a good contrast they say that the surface is to be coated with thin layer of white paint okay so you have a good contrast between the base material and the particles that you are using for testing now applying the magnetizing force right applying the magnetizing force then they use permanent magnets and electromagnetic yoke or 
electrodes or a coil or other means to establish the necessary magnetic flux. We have studied about all these methods of applying the necessary magnetic flux in our previous lectures, like using a permanent magnet, so using an electromagnetic yoke, or with the help of rods or a coil. Okay, so we have discussed all about them in our previous lecture. Now, applying dry magnetic particles like dust on a light layer of magnetic particles. Okay, then blowing off excess powder. And with the magnetizing force still applied, remove the excess powder from the surface with a few gentle puffs of dry air. The force of the air needs to be strong enough to remove the excess particles, but not strong enough to remove particles held by a magnetic flux leakage field. So we have to be careful while removing them. Now terminating the magnetic force, magnetizing force. Now if the magnetic flux is being generated with an electromagnet or an electromagnetic field, the magnetizing force should be terminated. Okay, we have terminating the magnetizing force. Okay, now if permanent magnets are being used, they can be left. Okay, so this is how we terminate the magnetizing force. Then inspection for indication. The basic reason for what we are doing this. We have to go inspection. Now we are inspection for indication. So look for the areas where the magnetic particles are clustered. Okay, the inspector look for the areas where the magnetic particles are clustered to access the cracks or defect on the workpiece. Now wet suspension inspection. Now wet suspension magnetic particle inspection, more commonly known as wet magnetic particle inspection, involves applying the particles while they are suspended in a liquid carrier. So wet Magnetic particle inspection is most commonly performed using a stationary wet horizontal inspection unit, but suspension are also available in spray cans for use with an electromagnetic yoke. You can see on the right hand side the diagram also it is showing that how it is performed using a stationary or you can wet horizontal inspection unit. Okay, and uh, this is a wet inspection has several advantages over a wet over, over, over a dry inspection. Sorry, a wet inspection has a several advantages over a dry inspection. Now, the first one is all of the surfaces of the component can be quickly and easily covered with a relatively uniform layer of particles. Okay, secondly, the liquid. Carrier provides mobility of the particles for an extended period of time, which allows enough particles to float to small leakage fields to form a visible indication. See, this is a plus point with the liquid carrier because what happens that the particles uh, are easy to float and they can float to the leakages fields. And they can form uh, the visible indication very easily if you compare with the dry particles because they are on the they are kept on the surface only. Where if you compare with the wet particles, wet inspection system, automatically the particles they have mobility. Okay, so they can easily go to the leakage field and found the and form the visible indication. So therefore, wet inspection is considered best. For detecting very small discontinuities on smooth surfaces. Okay, on smooth surfaces, wet inspection is considered best for finding out the discontinuity. On rough surfaces, the particles which are much smaller in wet suspensions can settle in the surface valleys and lose mobility, rendering from rendering them less effective than dry powders under these conditions. Okay. Now steps for performing wet particle inspection. Now surface preparation, what they do that just as is required with the dry particle inspection, the surface should be relatively clean. The surface should be relatively clean. The surface must be 
free of grease and oil and other moisture that could prevent the suspension from wetting the surface and preventing the particles from moving freely. Okay, we say that the surface must be, must be free of grease, oil and other moisture that could prevent the suspension from wetting the surface. So our motive is to wet the surface first and preventing the particles from moving freely. Okay, so a thin layer of paint, rust or scale will reduce test sensitivity, test sensitivity, but can sometimes be left in place with adequate result. So they have examples just specifications of uh, often allow up to 0 0.076 mm of non-conductive coating such as paint or 0 0.025 mm of ferromagnetic coating such as nickel to be left on the surface. It was also in the wet dry particles, it was also there. So any loose dirt, paint, or rust or scale must be removed. And there's some other specifications, some specifications require a surface to be coated with a thin layer of white paint, inspecting using visible particles in order to improve the contrast difference between the background and the particles. Okay, because especially when gray color particles are used. So these are the common you can say inspection or surface preparation techniques, okay, which should be followed, like using a thin layer of white color, white paint, because you want to improve the visibility or you can improve the contrast difference between the base material particles. Okay, so it is done for that. Okay. Particles. Uh, now applying suspended magnetic particles. Suspension is general. Uh, the suspension is generally sprayed or flowed over the surface of the part. Okay, suspension is generally sprayed or flowed over the surface of the part. Usually, the stream of suspension is diverted from the part just before the magnetizing field is applied. Now, applying the magnetizing force. The magnetizing force should be applied immediately after applying the suspension of magnetic particles. When using a wet horizontal inspection unit, the current is applied in two or three short bursts half second, which helps to improve particle mobility. Okay, so in this way, by the, by applying the current in two or three short bursts, so it will give you the it will give the particle mobility very it will improve sorry the it will improve the particle mobility. So in this way, you apply the magnetizing force. And in inspection for indications, so look for the areas where the magnetic particles are clustered. The basic purpose for doing all this is the inspecting the indication or inspecting for indications. So in this, they look for the areas where magnetic particles are clustered. The surface discontinuities will produce a sharp indications. Okay, you can see the where the magnetic particles are clustered. There you can see the surface. Discontinuities will produce a sharp indication, and the indications from such surface flaws will be less defined and lose definition as depth increases. Okay. Now, quality and process control. See, uh, the procedure for doing this uh, mounting particle inspection it also needs a uh, quality and process control. So, let's discuss about it. Now, particle concentration and condition. Now the concentration of particles in the suspension is a very important parameter and it is checked after the suspension is prepared and regularly monitored as a part of the quality system checks. Okay. Now standard require concentration checks to be performed every 8 hours or at every shift change. So the standard process used to perform the checks require agitating the carrier with a minimum of 30 minutes to ensure even particle distribution. They say that you have to agitate the carrier for a minimum of 30 minutes, which will help you to ensure that there is even particle distribution in that. Okay. Now they say that a sample is then taken. A sample is then taken in a pear shaped glove, 100 ml centrifuge tube. You can see in the diagram having a graduated stem of 
1 ml in 0.05 ml increment for fluorescent particles or 1.5 ml or in 1.5 ml in 0.1 ml increment for visible particles they have both different for fluorescent particles and uh, different for visible particles okay so uh, the the sample is then demagnetized so that the particles do not clump together while settling and the sample must then remain undisturbed for a period of time like 60 minutes for a petroleum based carrier uh, for 30 minutes for a water based carrier okay now the volume of settled particles is then read and acceptable ranges are 0 0.01 to 0.4 ml for fluorescent particles and 1.2 to 2.4 ml for visible particles okay so they say that the when first of all you say that you take the sample in a clear shape like 100 ml centrifuge tube having a pervasive stamp and they say that is 1.0 ml in 0.05 ml increments for fluorescent particles or 1.5 ml in 0.1 ml increment for visible particles so they have their own uh, you can say provisions so if the particle concentration is out of the acceptable range okay <coughs> they are given their ranges okay the acceptable ranges are 0.1 to 0.4 ml for person particles and 1.2 to 2.4 ml for visible particles and now they are saying that the particle concentration is out of the acceptable ranges then particles or the carrier must be added to bring the solution back in compliance with the requirements okay now particle condition now after the particles have settled they should be examined for brightness and agglomeration now fluorescent particles should be evaluated using ultraviolet light and visible particles under white light okay the brightness of the particles should be evaluated weekly by comparing the particles in the test solution to those in an unused reference solution that was saved when the solution was first prepared okay we have to understand also the brightness of the particles this should be evaluated weekly by comparing the particles in the test solution okay by comparing the particles in the test solution to those in an unused reference solution that was saved when the solution was first prepared traditionally the particles should appear loose and not lumped together if the brightness or the agglomeration of the particle is noticeably different from the reference solution the bath should be replaced okay so in this way to check the particle conditions right now the suspension contamination the suspension solution should also be examined for contamination which may come from inspected components like oils bees sand or dirt from or from the environment dust this examination is performed on the carrier and particles collected for concentration testing so differences in color layering or banding within the settled particles would indicate contamination some contamination is to be expected but if the foreign matter exceeds 30% of the settled solids the solution should be replaced okay if the foreign matter exceeds the solution of 30% of settled solids the solution should be replaced so be we should be careful with that that some contamination is to be expected but if the foreign matter exceeds 30% of the settled solid the solution should be replaced the carrier the liquid carrier portion of the solution should also be inspected for contamination oil in a water bath and water in a solvent bath are the primary concern but we should take in one thing should be noticed that if uh, the foreign material exceeds 30% of settled solids the solution should be replaced okay we should understand that uh water break test very uh, important uh daily water break check is required to evaluate the surface wetting performance of the water based test like uh, the water break check simply involves flooding a clean 
surface similar to those being inspected and observing the sub surface film okay the water break check simply involves flooding a clean surface similar to those being inspected and observing the surface film now if a continuous film forms over the entire surface sufficient wetting agent is present now if the film of suspension okay if the film of this suspension breaks that is water break exposing the surface of the component insufficient wetting agent is present and the solution should be adjusted or replaced so now electrical system checks now changes in the performance of the electrical system of a magnetic particle inspection unit can obviously have an effect on the sensitivity of an inspection so therefore the electrical system must be checked when the equipment is new when a mole function is suspected or every 6 months okay now like first one is the ammeter check so it is important that the ammeter uh, provide consistent uh, you can say and correct readings so it, if the meter is reading low over magnetization will occur and possibly result in excessive background noise and if the ammeter readings are high then flux density could be too low to produce detectable indications so to verify accuracy a calibrated ammeter is connected in series with the output circuit and values are compared to the equipment's ammeter values so readings are taken at three output levels in the working range and the equipment meter is not to deviate from the calibrated ammeter more than plus minus of 10% to 50m or 50m plus whichever is greater okay so if the meter is found to be outside this range the condition must be corrected so in this way how they calibrate the ammeter accordingly okay then short timer check now when a timer is used to control the short duration in short timer check we say that when a timer is used to control the short duration the timer must be calibrated so standards require that the standards require the timer be calibrated to within plus minus 0.1 second a certified timer should be used to verify the equipment timer is within the required tolerances the magnetization strength check ensuring that the magnetization equipment provides sufficient magnetic field strength is essential so standard require the magnetization strength of electromagnetic yoke to be checked prior to use each day okay each day that the magnetization strength is checked by lifting a steel block of a standard weight using the yoke at the maximum pole spacing to be used okay now lifting no sorry lighting 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 uh magnetic particle inspection predominantly relies on visual inspection to detect any indication that form okay so lighting is important so therefore lighting is very important element of the inspection process obviously the lighting requirements are different for an inspection conducted using visible particles than they are for an inspection conducted using fluorescent particles obviously the they are different requirements for visible particles and fluorescent particles Uh, so light requirements using visible particles they say that the visible particle inspections can be conducted using natural lightning or artificial lightning and however since natural daylight changes from time to time the use of artificial lightning is recommended to get better uniformity okay so they go for artificial lightning to get better uniformity so artificial lightning should be white whenever possible so halogen lamps are most commonly used and the light intensity is required to be 100 foot candles at the surface being inspected okay so light requirements when using fluorescent particles uh, ultraviolet lighting they say that when performing a magnetic particle inspection using fluorescent particles the condition of the ultraviolet light and the ambient white light must be monitored okay so standard and procedures require verifications of lens condition and light intensity so black light should never be used with a cracked filter as the output of white light and harmful black light will be increased also the cleanliness of the filter should also be checked regularly the filter should be checked visually and clean as necessary before warming up the light okay and most ultraviolet lights must be warmed up prior to use and should be on for at least 15 minutes before beginning the inspection 
So in this way, you go with the ultraviolet lightning inspection when using fluorescent particles. Okay. Now ambient white lightning. They say that uh, when performing uh, fluorescent part magnetic particle inspection, it's important to keep white light to a minimum as it will significantly reduce the inspector's ability to detect fluorescent indications. I repeat, it is important to keep the white light to a minimum as it will significantly reduce the inspector's ability to detect fluorescent part indications. So, light levels of less than 2 foot candles are required by most procedures. So, when checking black light intensity, a reading of the white light produced by the black light may be required to verify white light is being removed by the filter. Okay. So, white light for indication confirmation, you say that while white light is held to a minimum in fluorescent inspection, procedures may require that indications be evaluated under white light. The white light requirements for this evaluation are the same as when performing the inspection with visible particles. Okay, so the minimum in light intensity at the surface being inspected must be 100 foot candles. Okay. Now, light measurement, they say that the light intensity measurement are made using a radiometer. It is an instrument that transfers light energy into an electrical current. We have discussed about radiometers previously also. That is an instrument that uh, transfer that energy into electrical and a current. So some radiometers, okay, some radiometers have the ability to measure both black and white light. So while others require a separate sensor for each measurement. So whichever type is used, the sensing area should be clean and free of any material that could reduce or obstruct light reaching the sensor. So radiometers are relatively unstable instruments and readings often change considerably over time. So therefore, they should be calibrated at, at least every six months. So remember one thing that the yeah, light, light intensity measurements are made used using a radiometer, which is an instrument that transfers light energy into an electrical current. So that is important. Okay, so then go with the MCQs now. Okay, let's start the MCQ first. In magnetic particle inspection, the metal used for the particles has high magnetic permeability and low retentivity. So high magnetic permeability is important because it makes the particles attract easily to small magnetic leakage fields from discontinuities such as flaws. So it is true or false? So I think it's true in this case. Okay, it's true. Now in magnetic particle inspection, the metal used for particles has high magnetic permeability and low retentivity. So here, low retentivity is important because the particle themselves never become strongly magnetized. So they do not stick to each other on the surface of the part. Okay, so low retentivity is important because the particles themselves never become strongly magnetized. So they do not stick to each other on the surface of the part. So it's true or false? It is true. True in this case. Now in magnetic particle testing, magnetic particles are also supplied in a wet Suspension such as water or oil. It is true or false? It is true in this. Oh, sorry. In a magnetic particle inspection, the wet magnetic particle testing method is generally more sensitive than the dry because the suspension provides the particles with more mobility and makes it possible for smaller particles to be used. Since dust and adherence to surface contamination is reduced or eliminated. So it is true or false, it is true in this case. In magnetic particle inspection, so water-based carriers from stations are generally less expensive, presents uh, little or no fire hazards, uh, give off uh, or no petrochemical fumes, and are easier to clean from the part. So what do you think is true or false? So I think it's true. In magnetic particle inspection, so water-based solutions are usually formulated with a corrosion inhibitor to offer some corrosion protection. So what do you think is true or false? It is true in this case. So in magnetic particle inspection, so dry particle inspection is well suited for the inspection conducted on rough surfaces. Okay. So it is true or false. See, dry particle inspection is normally good for inspection on the product surfaces. So it is true. 
okay we all studied previously also in the in the past slides also that this inspection is suited for for rough surfaces okay so you can say it's true so in magnetic particle inspection the dry particles with half wave diet current is best approach when inspecting for lack of root penetration in wells of thin materials it is true or false so i think it's true in this case okay the answer is a true in magnetic particle inspection so wet inspection is considered best for detecting small discontinuities on smooth surfaces okay so this is true in this case answer is a in magnetic particle inspection the light intensity measurement are made using a radiometer that is an instrument that transfers light energy into an electric current okay we are using that radiometer light intensity measurements are made using a radiometer that is an instrument that transfers light energy into an electric current so we have just discussed in the past slides about radiometer okay so we it is true in this case that light intensity measurements are made using a radiometer it is an it is an instrument that transfers light energy into an electric current so it is true in this case so these are the references which you can refer and increase your knowledge in these topics